Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex, the comic Quarter. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video. Today, I went to box seat cards and collectibles in Champaign, Illinois, picked up some really cool PSA slabs and I'll be, I don't know the grades on those. So I'll be revealing the grades on those. And then I picked up some books and you'll see some footage right here. So hopefully you guys are excited. Here we go. This video is sponsored by the Shortboxed app. It's the easiest and safest way to buy and sell graded comic books online. There's a link in the description below that lets them know that I sent you. Use that link to download the app for both Apple and Android users and start shopping today. So here is a view of box seat cards and collectibles in Champaign, Illinois. Love this place. If you like anything collectible, really, this place has got it all. Um, tons of singles there on the wall, plus older wax on the back left there. There's cases right in front, those black cases on the wall. Those things are awesome. And I'm starting to walk back to the comic corner. Now, truth be told, I'm, I'm, I went here on this day to pick up a PSA return. So there's five baseball cards that they sent in to PSA for me. And then um, I already had a stack of comic books waiting for me at the shop. So here's some of the toys. This is kind of in the middle section of this sh of the shop. Really great selection of, you know, semi recent, but vint still vintage toys. Really like that daredevil on the wall. They've got some cool um, generation X figures. Just wanted to give you a slow pan of some of that stuff. Some of those Star Wars Power of the Force, I believe those are what those are. Um, some starting lineups, of course, baseball card shop. You'd see some starting lineups. And then this is a vendor right here. Um, I talked to him later that day. Just got some tons of comic books, he said. Then there's those T206s, plus some of these 19... I think those are 1930s at the bottom, 1933 maybe. And then there's that Phil Rizzuto. 1949 Bowman there for 40 bucks. That was really tempting. Hall of Famer Phil Rizzuto. That was really tempting to pick that one up. But anyways, love those um, Gaudi cards, those big league bubble gums. Now, so we're back at the comic books and looking at these J. Scott Campbell signed books. I think it was like 25 and $30 or 20 and $30. And this um, set of Danger Girl signed by J. Scott Campbell. Really nice Legends of the DC Universe covers signed there as well. Nice Alpha Flight number one, some Wonder Woman, just some great books. Now here's one of their cases. Those two books there, the Spider-Man and the Wolverine, those are both commission sketches. Nice Thor, uh, Miss Marvel, Black Lightning. I think some more, another Power Girl sketch and that uh, JSA. Great stuff. First Parasite. Awesome, awesome books. Adam Hughes. Nice Batman there, and that was new the last time. First appearance of Betsy Braddock's in the uh, main Marvel Universe comic format. Nice Adam Hughes book there signed. And then here are some of their slab books. They used to have a lot more slabs, but here are some of the slabs. Uh, nice Batman The Return number one, 9.8. Um, Batman Beyond, nice Art Germ signed 9.8. Love this J. Hung Lee. That one's always very, very tempting for me. Uh, first appearance of Lady Bullseye. Nice variant cover. Just awesome books, to be honest. Here's a nice Phil Rizzuto. Once again, that's a 1954. 20 bucks Hall of Famer. And there's some just cool cards up at the front. Was curious what this box was of price stuff. It's like a 1972, maybe, 71 or 72 Al K line. Awesome. Lots of nice Hall of Famers. Nolan Ryan, great card for 15 bucks. I always like that card. It's a cool card. Another nice Nolan Ryan card there. I want to get a Nolan Ryan rookie card. That's one card that I'm kind of out for. But it would be like low grade, like 4.0 or 4. <laughs> Four max PSA four max.
I was my eye was drawn by that Yogi Berra card. Just a lot of nice cards. There's that boxing card that's pretty cool. Roberto Clemente, I believe. And then some Pokemon cards. Always good to see some Pokemon. There's a couple first edition Machamps, which I believe was like a promo or something like that. Not really first edition base set, but there's some Tops cards, which are pretty cool. Just some nice Pokemon cards. This is in the side case. They have some Japanese. They have a Japanese booster box right there, which was really tempting for 120 bucks. And then they had these 2000s. Some first edition, Neo Genesis. Um, I like that Zapdos Fossil first edition. That's pretty cool for a hundred bucks. So I paid a hundred dollars for this batch of comic books and then grading fees for those cards. And I'll show you those. I'm really excited about those, but I'll show you the comic books first, just in order. I haven't rebagged these or anything like that, but the first one up is the Uncanny X-Men 221 nice newsstand copy of this book and this is the first appearance of mr sinister obviously this is a foundational comic book i'm really excited to have another copy of that one then i found some really nice covers and keys as well this one is legion number 35 and this one is just a great adam hughes cover i need to put that one in mylar but that is really nice cool kind of sought after Adam Hughes cover. So this is Superman Batman annual number four and this is the first official appearance of Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond outside of the DC animated. It's always a book that you look for and it's an art germ cover. So I remember chasing this as an art germ cover many many moons ago when I was just really hot after art germ covers but this is a really great key. Another nice Adam Hughes book. This one is Before Watchmen number four. Just a great classic Adam Hughes cover. These are pretty, pretty good value. We've got some J. Scott Campbell, Danger Girl. This was marked at $5. Danger Girl. I've got all of these already, but I just wanted some additional copies. As a matter of fact, I picked up two of that, that one. This one was marked $3. Once again, Danger Girl. And here's another great J. Scott Campbell. I think this is when J. Scott Campbell was like hitting on all cylinders, 2013, this time frame. This one was marked $3. Back to Before Watchmen. Number one, nice Adam Hughes cover. This one was marked three dollars. One up is Spitfire number one, a great Jenny Frizen cover. This one for a while was going for quite a bit, and I remember finding one in the back issues and then putting it back years and years ago. And I was like, man, I probably should have picked that one up. So happy to have this one again to be able to find it. This one was marked three dollars. So great, great Jenny Frizen cover. I've always loved this. Frank Cho cover, Miss Marvel number one. And I remember, uh, I can't remember who gave me a copy of this many years ago as an act of kindness. They gave me a copy and I was so pumped to finally get this one because I've been searching for it for a long time in the wild and was never, never able to find it. This one is a Hulk number 33 variant. And I love these variants where they show the character throughout the age and really nice Emma Frost cover. Here's a really sought after what if J. Scott Campbell. Astonishing X-Men What If number one. Really cool J. Scott Campbell cover. Once again, that's one that I always look for and I love to find that one. Found this Uncanny X-Men number 145. Amazing Doom cover. Love it. I think that is one of the most amazing Uncanny X-Men covers. I found for $4 another foundational comic book. This is X-Factor number five. Cameo Appearance of Apocalypse, really cool. I think this book is really awesome. X-Factor number six, first full appearance of Apocalypse. And this one was marked $25. Regardless, I got all of these for $100 total. Superman, All-Star Superman number one, love this story. Um, I think this is a great Superman story. Yeah, fantastic stuff. And I think there may be rumors that they might use this storyline for Superman Legacy. I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? I'm excited for that Superman. Any Anything Superman that they can throw at me movie-wise, I'll take it. I love it. And the last one is this What If featuring Spider-Man. Other number one. This is the first appearance of Poison, I believe. A symbiote that is fully in control of Peter Parker. And this one was marked $10. But like I said, for the entire batch of books here, I paid 100 bucks. So I think I did pretty good on those. 
Really excited about that lot. And now on to the cards. So here comes the PSA return of some really, really awesome vintage baseball cards. I not know the grades on these five vintage baseball cards. So what I'm gonna do is put a post-it on top of them. I'm just gonna grab them one by one and put a post-it on the top so I can't see the grade. There we go. This first one is a 1961 Mickey Mantle card. It's got decent centering, a little off right to left, and then it's got that on the back. So major issue on the back. I'm assuming that that would cause this one to be a, a one. Otherwise, I mean, this card looks decent, but that on the back, that big old tape pull paper loss makes me think that this would be a one. I, I'm not a big baseball card grader. I don't know what the difference between a one and a two is. If, if a big paper loss like that could get a two, I don't know but I would love it to, but I, I'm assuming it's a one. So with these, I think the grade is right here. So we'll see, we'll pull the side off first where I think it should say like 1961. Oh, nope, that's the grade, which I didn't see because of the uh, white balance is weird. 1961 tops Mickey Mantle. Is it a one? Poor one, so that's fine. I just want it slabbed, I don't care what. Number one, I'm just glad it came back authentic and I'm glad that it um, was graded. So Sometimes they just don't grade these things. I don't know why they don't encapsulate them even if they're like really poor condition. But anyways, yeah, one, that's fine with me. I'll take that. I just wanted it slabbed, I guess. The next card up is a 1954 Topps Yogi Berra card. And the debate on this was even to send it off because it's really not gonna be worth much. I just wanted it slabbed because I'm kind of trying to collect some of the Hall of Famers. And Mickey Mantle wasn't even in this set. He was in Bowman, like 54, 55. Tops 52, 53, gone for quite a while. Then back in 56 was his first time back. So I'm excited to have this regardless. Um, let me try to remember again which side would be. I think this side is the side that has a grade, or it's this side has the name. So like I said, 1954. I'm guessing that this one at least is a two. I, I hope it's a two. There's no significant paper loss or anything weird. It's got that crease up in the corner, some rounded corners, pretty much all the rounded corners. I'm hoping it's a two. There we go, it's a good, it's a two. Awesome, I'll take it. It's probably not even worth grading, but I wanted it graded. I like I like these PSA slabs. This is the number one card in the 1954 set. This is Ted Williams. Once again, I think this one is a two or a three. It's really off center as you can see, left to right or right to left, whichever one that is. Rounded corners, I'm hoping it's a two, but probably based on the fact that it's um, so off center, probably a two. I'd be really surprised if it was a one, but I'm guessing two. It's a one, it's a pour, wow. Oh, there's some big creasing too. You can see the big creasing right across the face. Yep, I should probably look at these before I guess my grade. All right, so we got the outside two are ones and the middle Yogi Berra is a two, great stuff. Uh, now it's a Willie Mays card. So 1954 Willie Mays. This one's looking pretty decent. It's got a lot of corner crunching damage going on, but no big creases. I'm hoping this one can get a two. As far as centering goes, pretty good centering. Looks really good. Looks pretty even on both sides. Hoping to get a two, like I said. The corners aren't rounded, but there is definitely impact damage on both sides there. So it says 1954 tops, Willie Mays. A two, great. That's awesome. That'll do. That'll do. I'll take it. I mean, not the highest grades. I just wanted these Hall of Famers graded. The last one up is the one I'm most excited about. This one is a Jackie Robinson, 1954 tops. There is a crease, a diagonal crease going this way. Pretty good centering. There's a little bit of a, like a full dog ear type thing on the top. Like I said, good centering, crease, rounded corners, pretty decent back. Hoping this one gets a two as well. I don't expect anything more than a two, but 
There we go. A two. Just like I thought. But that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely not a baseball card collector, but I want to get some of the Hall of Famers. Definitely a comic book collector. Thank you guys once again for watching this video. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscription button. Hit that bell to be notified when there's future videos. If you ever need something graded from PSA, you can hit up Box Seat Cards and Collectibles in Champaign, Illinois. I'm sure they'd be happy to provide that service for you. But with that being said, you guys, leave a thumbs up if you can. Comment down below what you thought of the video, and I will talk to you all on the next one. See you. Bye.